good morning. Thank you everyone for coming. My name's uh, Lee Ballantyne and I am um, I'm contracted by HEIW um, at, at the moment to develop and implement a digital capability framework across NHS Wales. So, so that's my role. Um, the theme for today was about using technology in practice and I'm, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the the supports that we're putting in place um, to, to help you with technology. So that's really about developing digital skills, developing digital capabilities. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the framework, about the programme of work, who's been involved and where we are. Um, and you are going to get a little sort of preview of the framework, if you like, hot off the press. Um, and we're also going to hear from um, from Laura from Digital Communities Wales, who's going to talk a little bit about why it's important to develop digital capability. Um, and we've also got Emma, who's going to talk about the um, the, the, the Scottish context and, and the support and the approach um, in Scotland. So uh, I'm thinking is about housekeeping rules. Yes. So if you've got any questions, then please feel free to put them in the chat or to put your hand up. Um, and we can take questions at the end of each presentation. When I'm uh, presenting, I don't mind being interrupted, but uh, I, I'm assuming that other presenters would probably prefer it if you waited until the end. Um, and yeah, I think I'll just hand over now to Laura, if that's OK. Absolutely. Thanks for the introduction there, Lee. Um, a little bit like Lee, just so you all know, I'm more than happy to be interrupted. So if you've got any burning questions midway through, I'm more than happy with that. But similarly happy for um, for any questions at the end. So um, so thank you for having me um, to start off today. So to introduce myself, I'm Laura Phillips. Um, I'm the training manager for um, Digital Communities Wales, Digital Confidence, Health and Wellbeing. Um, I've had a little look at who's in the room today and I've seen some familiar names. So some of you will know the work that we do already um, within Wales um, as far as sort of digital inclusion is concerned. Um, and I'm going to speak to you today a little bit about what we do, um, why we think that sort of being digitally competent and digitally included is massively important. Um, and um, a little bit of the work that we've done in health in Wales um, since the start of our programme three years ago. So um, I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to start timing myself just so I don't go over. I think it's 15 minutes, actually. So, um, so yes, uh, massive thank you for letting me be here today. So for those of you that aren't aware, I'll give you a little bit of background on sort of Digital Communities Wales, Digital Confidence, Health and Wellbeing. From this point on, I'm going to refer to it as DCW just because it's easier um, and it's less of a mouthful. Um, so um, our programme is um, a Welsh Government procured digital inclusion programme. So we work across Wales to um, improve um, digital skills, confidence and health and well-being for communities, citizens, organisations, anyone who wants it really in Wales. Um, we work across sectors, um, so we don't just work within health, we work in the third sector, private sector, um, and within things like local authorities and stuff like that as well. So our aim is to help um, all sectors in Wales to reach people who are digitally excluded. Um, so um, a lot of the stuff that we do is working with organisations to develop um, full programmes of support or work um, or digital strategies and things like that. So um, the stuff that I'm going to talk about today is really only a small part of the the sort of bigger programme of support that we offer. Um, if you have any questions, like I've said, feel free to ask at the end of my little presentation. If not, my contact details will be made available if you wanted to get in touch and have a little bit more of a chat about the work that we do and the support that we can provide. So the programme of work that, that I'm part of um, is um, run by the Wales Cooperative Centre um, and um, the programme as it stands has been running since 2019. I feel like time doesn't mean anything anymore, so I'm going to go with 2019. Um, and we've recently found out that we've had a funding extension for another three years. So we're able to continue the fantastic groundwork that we've made over um, over the past three years and be able to do that until 2025, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so for us, digital inclusion is about people being able to have the skills um, and the confidence to access things online um, in a way that is really meaningful to them. 
um because you know the last thing that we want is just to to throw people online or throw people into the internet in a way that isn't either going to benefit them or give them um you know opportunities that they want um so as we all know we've we've lived through a pandemic now which is um oddly oddly exciting um and um we've all seen the impact that sort of the lack of digital confidence and skills has on you know individuals on the workforce on people being you know at risk of further loneliness and isolation inequality to access of services especially health and well-being services um and building sort of digital confidence is is really key to ensuring that nobody gets left behind and that's not only for you know citizens in wales but the workforce as well because it's massively important for us to make sure that we're bringing everybody with us which is why i'm so excited about the work that lee is doing um, and the importance of of bringing everybody along on the journey as well so the current picture in Wales as it stands at the moment is that there are barriers to getting online. Um, so a couple that you can see on the screen there is that we've got um, access barriers, um, you know, with the recent storms that we've had, lots of people have found that they haven't been able to access the Internet. Um, or for those that live in more rural areas, it is still a real barrier for engaging and um, and getting online um, and then we've got the other barriers which are confidence and skills and another barrier that's on the not on the screen there is um, people who have just convinced themselves that they can't do it and that sort of almost negative I just can't do this I don't understand and it's not for me um, and that's where um, I like to think that DCW um, sort of really encourage people and they inspire people, um, again, whether it's, you know, within the health workforce or members of the public to be able to really see the benefits to getting online and finding that hook and then building up on on the skills and confidence from there. Um, so seven percent of the population of Wales is currently um, not online. Um, and um, within that number, that's decreased from um, 11 percent. Um, about a year and a half ago now um, so the numbers are improving um, but what we want to make sure is that we're not we're not creating a wider digital divide from from those who can access and who want to to those who who can't or maybe don't want to um, so there is a 23 percent lack of essential digital skills with citizens of wales um, and that massively jumps up to 64 percent for people who are over 75 so Digital skills are something that I'm going to talk about, you know, in the framework that we use within DCW um, and sort of how we how we encourage people to engage with that a little bit more. Um, so older people and people with disabilities and, and limiting long term conditions are less likely to be online as well. Um, and within the NHS and within the health and social care sector, um, people who interact with, you know, with the NHS and with health and social care tend to be disproportionately excluded um, and that's for you know a multitude of reasons but that's why we're working so hard with with health boards with you know social care wales um, and the health and social care sector to really improve that number so everybody can do everything that they want to and they need to um, online so in addition to the the numbers that i've mentioned on screen there 23 percent of the adult population lack digital skills for life and for work um, and that's something that we're really really keen to unpack with um, with different organizations um, you know and, and different people who are in potentially public facing roles um, so in Wales um, as opposed to in England we consider skills for life and skills for work all in one um, because they feed into each other um, whereas in England they consider they've got a list of skills for work and then a skill you know a list of skills for life but for us in Wales, there's there's sort of a, a pretty standardised agreed level that, you know, if you can access a form for signing up for an email account for a social media profile, those are the same skills that you'd use for being able to set up like a LinkedIn profile to be able to find work or be able to, you know, talk to people in a more professional manner, for example. Um, but there is real sort of interconnectivity within um, skills for work and skills for life. Um, so technology's really got the potential to empower and support people to live healthier lives, um, as you all probably know. Um, and, you know, that includes things like accessing um, health information, essential health services, um, supporting behaviour change um, and monitoring and sort of diagnosing symptoms and conditions and things like that. 
and managing long term health conditions and sort of making social connections can be really beneficial for people, you know, as they get diagnosed and things like that joining things like forums and things can really, really help to make people feel less isolated and less alone um, when they need it. Um, so if we do, if we were to leave these things un, um, unaddressed, um, you know, it would mean that there would be, uh, you know, digital, further digital inequalities along with sort of social inequalities um, and inequalities in health, really. Um, it will further exacerbate sort of um, health systems um, because there is this big drive and this big move into more digital um, digital I can't think of the word now um, interactions within the health sector you know if you think of apps for being able to book appointments or repeat prescriptions we don't want people to to be left behind and to again as I've mentioned um, make that digital divide um, any worse so we understand that digital inclusion and skills need to be embedded within training um, for health and social care staff, um, ensuring that it becomes a really core cool component for delivering health care, really, um, in the modern day. Um, and again, the, um, the framework that Lee is working on is going to be really essential for being able to identify where you are within that sort of um, sort of range. Um, so health, you know, healthcare systems seek to empower populations to manage their health um, using digital technology. And we just need to make sure that everybody, again, is along on that journey with us. So um, what does it mean to be a digitally comfortable workforce? So we've split this into two really basic areas. Um, so we've got confidence and skills. So this is all relating back to the digital strategy for Wales that was um, announced last January. Um, and the first one is the confidence, which is to equip people with motivation, access skills and confidence to engage with an increasingly digital world. Um, and the skills side of it is to create a workforce that has digital skills, capability and confidence to accept in the workplace and in everyday life. Um, so with that, um, a fundamental part of that is supporting, as I've said, organisations um, to increase digital confidence and skills of their staff and volunteers. And something that I'm going to mention really quickly um, before I get into the work that we do within different health boards is just talk to you really, really, really quickly about the essential digital skills framework. So as you can all hopefully see on my screen here, this is the essential skills framework. It's split into five different areas. So there's four core foundation skills and then around the outside, we've got being safe, legal and confident online. Um, so as I've mentioned, there are gaps in those foundation skills for people in work um, and people outside of work. Um, we're focusing at the moment on people sort of who are in the in the health and social care sort of sector. Um, and um, so what we look to do is we engage with people using this as our little framework, essentially. Um, so um, what we're doing is um, we're looking at identifying different areas of support and guidance that we can provide um, that is really specific to the workforce. So a couple of the key things that we've done within health boards um, over the past three years is um, we've developed a skills audit, um, which gives us an opportunity to actually fully understand where the digital skills of the workforce is. Um, and we use the um, essential digital skills framework as a baseline for that. So we ask questions that are relevant to communicating or transacting or problem solving and things like that. Um, and what was really lovely when um, when you all joined the call is we mentioned sort of the ability to Google things. That is absolutely essential when it comes to sort of having confidence online. I don't know any more than anybody else about being on the internet, but I'm really, really comfortable comfortable Google searching things and finding out the answers to questions. So what we do is we look at the skills audit and we get people to fill out the questionnaire anonymously, um, which gives them the opportunity to be really honest about where they put their own skills. So we ask them to rate their own skills and their confidence and how comfortable they are with different areas, um, because I think that there's a real assumption um, you know, that potentially people within the NHS workforce in Wales, that they can just do it. You know, you you have this job, so you must be able to attach something onto an email. Why wouldn't you be able to do that? And I think that breaking down those assumptions is absolutely massively important for 
bringing again bringing everybody up at the same time and at different levels potentially um so that's what we do with our skills audits um what we can do with skills audits is we can make them a little bit more bespoke um so um you know we can if you're undertaking a certain digital project you know around proms or digitizing health records or whatever it is and you wanted a particular department to carry out a skills audit so you can assess where you know where the skills are of that particular department or team of people is we can support with that and make the questions potentially a little bit more relevant to the work that you're doing uh, um, <clears throat> And um, from that, then we can identify training and support that is really, really relevant to the people and the work that they're going to be doing. The next thing then is digital champions. Um, oh, going back to skills audit. So the example that I've got for you um, within Wales at the moment is we're currently working with Betsy um, to develop a skills audit. We've developed it. It's currently um, in and undergoing translation, um, but we've got a skills audit that has been Bes uh, you know, bespoke designed um, specifically for the. Um, uh, oh, my gosh, I've completely lost which apartment it's for um, facilities and estates. If I could remember anything, that would be grand. But the facilities and estates department within Betsy are all going to complete a skills audit. We're going to provide training as a result of that audit once we've got the answers to those questions. So we're not building a training package based on assumptions we're doing it with actual fact and data which is exciting and then the plan is to enable um, to identify digital champions out of that skills audit so we can say great we know we've got people who are slightly better skilled can they support their colleagues to be able to to take them on the journey because what's massively important from a champion's perspective um, is that more often than not, you'll get a better buy in if it's people that you're familiar with or that you're comfortable talking to rather than if I was to sit with you and say, here's how you do this thing. I'm a perfect stranger. Whereas you get that much better buy in when you've got somebody who's um, who, who, you know, and who you're comfortable with. So our digital champions course is split into three areas um, we've got helping people to get online. Then we talk to um, champions or members of staff or volunteers about um, facilitating sessions. So whether that's online or face to face, face to face or one to one or with groups, lots of different avenues there. And then very finally, we talk to champions about how they can maintain and support their networks and really, really embed that good core work um, into their organisation. So that was a real whistle stop tour through Digital Communities Wales. I am at 14 minutes and 57 seconds, so I think I'm within time. Um, if you did have any questions for me or you wanted to get in touch, my contact details on our website are on the screen now. So do feel free to. Um, but thank you all very much for your time. Thank you so much, Laura. That's it's really, really interesting. And um, there's a there's a couple of points I want to pick up on um but if anyone has any questions then just uh put them in the chat or put your put your hand up um but I, I guess what the reason that i was keen for you to be involved in this session and um something that i'm really passionate about is that developing digital capability is more than developing a digitally ready workforce um you know that is a, a key objective in lots of strategies we have to have this digitally ready workforce but actually um yes we know that we need to use it every day in our work and yes we know that uh, you know new technologies are transforming the way that we deliver our services um but we also know that participating digitally leads to better outcomes broadly um you know it's better access to jobs and education it has um improved uh, health and well-being longer life expectancy um, and as we move more of our democratic processes online as well, there's a bit around voice and visibility. And you did touch on the fact that some of the excluded people are already disadvantaged. So actually it, it compounds disadvantage. So whether that's about, you know, you've got a democratic process online and, and you don't have the people being represented there or whether it's someone that's already disadvantaged in another way and now can't access what they need to be able to access online so it's incredibly important and the other bit I, I'm sorry I'm going off on a tangent but um, um it was quite inspiring the other bit that I want to pick up on um just very quickly is that 
the when you were talking about barriers to being online um, and that negative identity and every single one of us on this call knows someone who says they are not good with technology. They're not good with computers. Computers just don't like me. We've we've all met somebody that's like that. And that is a incredibly, you know, it's it, it's a very embedded, you know, entrenched barrier um, because it's been internalized over a really long time and reinforced. So someone that thinks they're not good with computers doesn't really have the confidence to overcome any issues that happen. So something goes wrong and they, you know, they're like, oh, I told you I was rubbish with computers. Yeah. That is the hardest barrier to overcome. And Absolutely. a lot of the a lot of the interventions that we put in place, the formal interventions as a as a society, um, not specifically H E I W, I mean, um, they're they're really uh not effective with with people <laughs> like that. Um, and the one thing that really, really works uh, is the digital champion approach. And it's very often friends and family and the support of friends and family that can help with that particular barrier. But in the workplace, it's, it's digital champions. So sorry, went off on a tangent. No. Has anyone got in, any questions? <laughs> Absolutely agreed. And Lee, while people are putting their hands up and things, I think that individuals in those with that sort of negative self-talk become self-fulfilling prophecies. So they go, no, I can't do this. And then things go wrong. And then that thing happens and it just snowballs and it goes from there. Absolutely couldn't agree more of everything you've said. Yeah, thank you very much. Fab. John. John, have you got a question? Sorry. You're on mute. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Laura, for the presentation. That was uh, really interesting. We're, we're um, working quite close with Tech Cymru on uh, yeah. to support evaluation with some of our tech projects. And I was just wondering what um, you know the re relationship is with DCW with organisations like Tech Cymru to share that learning and, and make sure that's because I guess there's going to be learning that you're capturing that you know these other organisations are capturing and how that's sort of getting pulled together. Absolutely. So we do we do work quite closely with Tech Cymru. Um, so we worked quite closely with them when um, we had the rollout of Attend Anywhere. Um, and we do we do sort of project work with um, with wider organisations as well, like Tech Cymru and HEIW. And yes, yeah, so we, we do try and sort of share as much as we can um, with different organisations. And um, yeah, absolutely. OK, yeah, thanks, Laura. OK. Um, so uh, there's just one little point that I, I'm going to make. I know I'm, I'm the one that's been <laughs> commenting and asking all the questions, but there's one final um, point before we move on. And that is you talked about the essential digital skills framework. Um, and I just wanted to make really clear that the digital framework that I'm working on um, very much builds on that work. Uh, and, and the idea is that if you've been working with a health board and using that framework and then we, you know we've got a digital capability framework it's not something that's completely different it's something that builds on it it's it's more contextualized in terms of healthcare um but it's not something that that's completely separate um so if there's no more questions then uh Thank you so much, uh, Laura. That was a fantastic presentation. And I'm going to hand over now to Emma, um, who comes from Scotland, like me, <laughs> where it's lovely and sunny today, I should say. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. And yes, it is sunny for a change, actually. I've had some pretty bad weather, but um, yeah, nice and sunny today. Um, bear with me one second and I'll just share my slides. So really lovely um, to see you all here today. Um, I'm Emma, I'm a digital learning lead at NHS Education for Scotland or NES as we're known. Um, and I'm part of a new team called the Digitally Enabled Workforce Team, which I'm going to talk a little bit about in this session um, and the work that we've been doing. Um, I will cover the, the Scottish approach um, to building a digitally enabled workforce um, and yeah, just provide some insight really into um, what our team's been up to to try and support this. So Scotland's digital health and care strategy um, was first published in 2018 and was refreshed at the end of last year. Both versions really outline the importance of digital skills for health and care um, 
and the refresh really acknowledges the acceleration um, of this need as a result of the pandemic. So the refresh really kind of emphasises the opportunity to both sustain and build on that momentum that we saw um, over the past few years. And I guess this change is really about a cultural shift towards a wider acceptance of, benef of the benefits of digital solutions for both the workforce um, and importantly for citizens. And ultimately, digital skills are now being seen as core skills for the workforce across the health and care sector. And these couple of quotes have just pulled out from the strategy and they really highlight this. So they're saying in order to embed digital transformation, leaders across health and care must be equipped with the necessary digital skills and saying that these skills aren't just about how we use digital, but also the skills that people need to identify how digital could be used. And this is really talking about how we transform our services for a digital age. So the Scottish Government agreed to fund a programme of work um, over an, an initial two year period. So this started in April last year and is set to run through to May 23. So what happened was a bid was produced by um, a large stakeholder um, group back in October 2020. This was then agreed and then priorities were agreed with the Scottish um, Government with their Digital Health and Care um, Portfolio Board. And then NES, in collaboration with um, a range of partners and stakeholders, is supporting the delivery um, of this programme. And this programme is called the Building Digital Skills and Leadership Programme. So the programme is there. So we're aware we're not we're not there to fund whole scale improvement as such in workforce digital skills and knowledge. We recognise that this remains the responsibility of, of individual organisations, but the priorities um, within the programme will help to provide foundational resources to help support building digital skills and leadership across the sector. Um, and I'll say a little bit more about this in a moment. This is um, just what the team looks like to give you a picture of our size. So there's nine of us and um, we're headed up by Paula Baird, who's our programme lead. We've got four specialist leads looking at different priorities and work streams. We've got business analysts um, and we've got supporting roles in the team as well. And these are um, some of the uh, stakeholders um, that we um, that we collaborate with. So we report into quite a large programme board who influence, inform um, and collaborate on the work that we do. And the programme itself is heavily influenced by collaboration and bringing together the many, many resources and knowledge which already exist within the sector. Um, and as you can see on this slide, that just is a, is a snapshot of some of the people who are involved with this work. So what I'll do, I'll quickly run through some of the priorities that the team's working on. Um, there's quite a few of them, so I'll just give you a little bit of an oversight um, of what these are. So firstly, there's work around the development and delivery um, of a professional development award in technology enabled care, and that supports those working in health, housing um, and care contexts. We've got a dedicated um, learning resource website for the use of um, Near Me Remote Consulting um, and Connect Me, which is remote health monitoring, uh, formerly known as Remote Health Pathways. Um, and these resources are accessible right across the sector. We are growing an existing leadership program, um, the Digital Health and Care Leadership Program. So we're really scaling up participant numbers and widening participation um, right across health and care. There's also an aim to deliver a master's level program um, for an initial cohort of 60 strategic level um, digital leads across health and care. Our other work um, so involves identifying options as to how we create a central resource um, where people can go and really easily access and share digital skills resources. So looking for that to be a single accessible platform for people to go to. 
as you probably also saw um, in your own organisation, so the pandemic um, accelerated the rollout of Microsoft 365, including Teams. Um, so that was right across NHS Scotland. And we've got one work stream that's dedicated to developing um, an approach to training, which can be used widely um, across health and hopefully also care in the future as well. Uh, so what we've got at the moment, so we've got a SharePoint site which is launched. It's called the Microsoft 365 Skills Hub, and it contains lots of resources, um, Microsoft and bespoke NHS resources. And it's also a central place for people to go and find um, any updates um, to what's coming kind of next for Microsoft 365. And we've linked it into Teams as well. So everyone who, who goes into Teams can click and immediately access um, this resource. We've got another work stream looking at knowledge, information and data roles um, across health and care. And that's included things like creating a virtual learning network, sharing um, resources and hosting um, a webinar series. Uh, and then the final point on here is we're looking to fund places and um, to support people through a digital learning design course. So that's people who are creating digital learning um, within their organisations. So there's lots, lots going on. Um, a key focus area um, for, us, for us has really been on um, the leadership aspects and we call this digital leadership and um, sometimes we call it leadership in a digital age, which is perhaps more accurate. Um, we know it's the leaders who ultimately will set the tone for the rest of the organisation, for their teams and cre can create that culture and environment for change. We think about digital leaders as having these kinds of qualities that you can see on the screen. Um, but interested to hear from yourselves as well. Um, and I wondered, you know, is there something that you would maybe add to this list? Um, if anything kind of comes to mind, feel free to just pop pop that into the chat and I'll maybe read those out in a moment um, if any ideas come in. But we think about digital leaders as being curious, um, so able to change their perspective having a thirst for new skills and innovations. We think about them as being creative, so not afraid of tackling problems in new ways and being able to create a creative vision for their teams. We think about them as being data driven um, and having those skills around data as being really important so they can make decisions based on meaningful data. They're collaborative, so they work with other others. They create that culture of inclusion. User-led, um, really interesting one when people are trying to put digital interventions or solutions in place. Um, you know, do they understand their users and are they answering a, a problem um, which exists and they know about um, because they've been driven by the needs of um, users? And being agile, so able to adapt to new priorities, opportunities um, and embrace uncertainty. I can see some things popping into the chat as well. Um, yeah, about being compassionate. Yeah, so important as well. Um, probably, as with most things, the biggest thing is always the people um, and being able to bring them with you. See a few people typing as well, so keep an eye on the chat. Um, and in this respect, so for the leadership, we're really focusing on this at all levels. So you can see on here, um, we've kind of split it out into three different levels on this um, triangle. So first of all, um, at the kind of most senior level, so we're looking at what we can develop at um, for strategic level digital leads. So I mentioned earlier, we've got an intention to develop a master's program um, for those with specific digital responsibilities. For those in strategic roles, um, but in, in different roles, we're looking at whether we can run something like um, a masterclass style intervention to help increase digital mindset and help people to understand what this kind of new responsibility is around digital that all these roles now have. At that mid level, we've got our existing digital health and care leadership program. That's an eight month program. Participants um, take forward a digital improvement project in their organisations as part of that. Um, and it's yeah, just a brilliant way of supporting people to build their knowledge and their confidence, bringing them together as a kind of 
a, a group of people with that mindset um, and wanting to, you know, try try and do things differently, transform their, you know, the way their services work. And then we've also been running an Exploring Digital Leadership um, webinar series, which is aimed at all levels across health and care, and it's exploring different aspects of digital leadership. So we held a first one, um, which was very much, you know, what is it? What what do we mean by this? Um, you know, there's lots of definitions of what a digital leader um, might be. And um, then we've got another one coming up, which is around cyber security, um, fitting in with Cyber Week, talking about, you know, why does that matter to me as a leader? Um, and then we, we've got a, lots of upcoming topics which are based on feedback that people have given us in, in those earlier sessions about what they want to hear about next. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an insight into what's going um, on in Scotland at the moment. Um, and yeah, just happy if there's um, any questions at all. Um, you can follow the leadership program using the Twitter handle um, that's on the screen there. So at NES underscore DLP, where we'll share often information about um, our other work as well um, and events. So thank you very much. That was that was brilliant, Emma. I really like hearing from um, what from what's happening in other nations. And and uh, Paula, who heads up your team, is someone who I keep in regular contact with because I think it's really important to um, to understand the complex pathways in and out of healthcare. So whether that's from education, third sector, social care, or other nations, then we have to be very cognizant of what's what's going on. Um, and what's really fascinating is the is this is the commonality um, across what's happening in Scotland and Wales? Um, we have the Centre for Digital Public Services in Wales, and they are very much focused on developing leadership skills, digital leaders, for exactly the reasons that you mentioned, um, and that is that it's the leaders who can. Uh, create the environment that allows us to realise the benefits of digital transformation, and actually, without that, in in the first instance, then um, then then nothing's really going to change appropriately. So, so that was that was fascinating. Um, there's a couple of points um, that that are probably worth I might share in the chat that. Um, you touched on some of the support that's available in Scotland. We kind of have equivalent versions in Wales that I thought would be um, useful for people to know about. So there's the Intensive Learning Academy. I think I've got a um, link to that. Um, so that prov the, within the Intensive Learning Academy, there's a number of different courses available. Um, around things like user centered design, leadership and digital project management and digital transformation. And they are at different levels. So the, um, they, they can build towards a master's qualification if you're interested in doing that. And then the Center for Digital Public Services also do um, some training and support. And I'll find the link. I don't have it to hand. Um, to their training as well, um, but all very, very closely aligned. So that that's fantastic. And we will continue to keep in touch. Emma, thank you so much. Has anyone got any questions? OK, fab. So oh, Sharon, please come in. Hi. Hi, Emma. Thank you. That was brilliant. Really inspiring. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask is one of the things that I notice happening in practice is that as therapists, we all tend to work quite separately still. We try to work together, but even so, there are not always those forums that allow us to meet and, um, you know, things are so busy. We don't always have time to explore our thoughts and think about our ideas. When we think about our wider goals, what we want to achieve with our communities, how we're going to use digital to help us to get there. And I was wondering how you managed to get so many people all working together. How did you even start that project? So, um, so I guess, yeah, there's a few things that kind of come to mind. So that makes me think, so the digital leadership programme that we run really kind of helps in terms of like people in practice and lots of different organisations come together. So we have a couple of things. We've got a Scottish digital health and care um, network, which is essentially just set up um, on Teams. Um, which was set up before I joined NES, but 
has been kind of really successful in bringing lots of people together and um, you know it's split out into different channels and areas of interest there's a digital nmap channel specifically on there anyone who goes through the leadership program is encouraged to join that um and each kind of cohort itself within um the program as well become their own sort of community of practice and network um in terms of like how the actual you know how the team came together um you know that again that was a lot of partnership work between a lot of organizations and um, to put that sort of initial bid together um and really the way we so the way we kind of run now is that we will have regular uh, meetings with that program board and there, you know, it's as much as us telling them, you know, kind of what we're doing as as them telling us, you know, what's happening in their organisations and and their work. Um, you know, so so we're not duplicating things. It's very much about, you know, looking at what we have already, um, you know, and making that accessible and better um, for the workforce. Great. Thanks, Sam. Fantastic. Um, so I think, given the time that we're at, that we will move on. Uh, I have a, a a lengthy presentation to bore you all with. I'm kidding. I have a very flexible presentation because I wasn't sure about timing. So we'll we'll possibly um, just whiz through some slides so that um, we can get to the important part, which is I want to show you a little uh, part of the digital capability framework. But we will start with a bit of an overview. Um, Lauren, can we just go on to the next slide? So, yes, I'm not going to go into this in great detail because um, I think that, that Laura covered a lot of this, but we were talking about um, developing digital capability before the pandemic. The pandemic is really just um, it, it's it's shown that we have this capability for rapid transformation, um, but also, as as uh, Laura touched on, there was the potential for um, the digital divide to be uh, have a, an even bigger impact as a result. So what we want to do now is move from that and ensure that we're moving forward in a really inclusive way. Lauren, I think if, if if I just stop for breath, you know that, that, <laughs> that that's time to move on. Um, <laughs> so, so yes, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, although we are talk we talk a lot about having a digitally ready workforce, um, to to really have those improved outcomes, we need all parts of this puzzle, and that includes access and infrastructure. Um, it includes having digital professionals, so that's the people who build the websites, maintain the databases. Um, we need a healthcare workforce who are confident and, and have the skills to do their jobs, but also to support patients and service users um, who are part of that general population. And they need to have the capability as well in order for us to realise the, the benefits of digital. Can we? Yeah, thank you. Um, so. Um, as is across all strategies and, and planning just now, um, we have as part of one of our objectives is to lead the development and implementation of a digital capability framework for healthcare. And for anyone who doesn't know what that looks like, this is a, it's a process whereby an individual can really understand the skills and capabilities required. They can then self-evaluate using an interactive tool. They can then go away um, and learn from available resources, whether they're online or face to face, and then they can reflect on their progress and on their next steps. Um, because this is something that is ongoing. It's really important that it's seen as a as a continuum, not something that you do once and then forget about because technology is changing all the time and no matter what level you're at, um, you need to continually develop your skills. And I think that's particularly important um, in it's important in healthcare, it's important in lots of professions because you are all the experts at, at what you do. Um, and so you are best placed to make those decisions, to inform those decisions on how to best use technology in your context, in your profession, with your patients. But in order to do that, to have that conversation, then you have to have a really good understanding. So this is an outline of the programme of work. So we started with a landscape review. Um, now, the, I always think this is a really important 
starting point. But for me, my background is is education um, and Scotland. So the landscape review was a hugely important part for me in terms of understanding the context, the, the policy context, and also understanding all the amazing work, for example, Digital Communities Wales, um, and making sure that the work that I was doing was really um, was well aligned to existing work and th that it wasn't seen as a duplication or even worse, undermining um, existing work. Uh, we also looked at existing frameworks, so there were 13 different frameworks that I'd identified as important because they were frameworks that people were likely to come into contact with. Um, so again, thinking about those uh, complex pathways in and out of healthcare. So I looked at schools, apprenticeships, higher education. Um, I looked at what was happening in other nations, um, the essential digital skills frameworks. Um, and I looked at two really big projects. So JISC were one and the, there was an EU competent digital competence project was another one. And they were huge programmes of work that went on over a number of years. And they looked at lots of frameworks as well. So they were a really good starting point. So once I'd done that, then we established some partners for phase one. So that was um, allied health professionals and healthcare science. Uh, we agreed on the approach um, and we came up with a project plan and initiated the, the project. And at the moment we're in phase one. So we've been developing with our working group the, um, the, the actual wording of the framework, we're collating resources and we're going to do a pilot in March before we move on to phase two and potentially subsequent phases before we go to embed it. It's very much an iterative implementation, so we're constantly asking for feedback and refining the framework and refining the approach as we move on. Uh, this is just a snapshot. We'll just whiz past that. That was me looking at um, all the different frameworks and colour coding them. Um, and what I could uh, work out from that was that there was very much a convergence in terms of the frameworks that are out there. So the, there's there's commonality and the similarity in the wording and the groupings. Um, and so we had a really good place to start from. Um, and this really very terrible quality graphic because I made it myself. I'm, uh, I'm I'm waiting for someone who's more skilled in that area to come up with a better one. Um, but this is the digital capability framework as it stands just now. Um, as I said, it's iterative, so we we will continue to develop it. But it is likely that the domains and subdomains in this diagram will stay the same. So we've got learning and leadership, uh, working with others, safety and well-being using technology, understanding informatics and research and innovation. And underneath each of those six domains, there are three subdomains. And for each subdomain, there are some descriptive statements and capability statements. So I'll show you what that actually um, what that looks like. And those six domains um, have are very much aligned to the other capability frameworks, including the essential skills framework that, that Laura talked about as well. OK, so um, I'm going to basically show you a bit of the digital capability framework and the interactive tool, which actually has not been developed, technically developed yet. We're still in the middle of um, doing that. But I really wanted to give you an opportunity to to participate in a more practical way. So we've got one of the domains is working with others, and that is um, that is about communication and collaboration and participation. So Lauren. Thank you. Um, so within that domain, we've got those three subdomains I mentioned. Within each subdomain, there are three descriptive statements. Um, now, we're not going to read them just now. Lauren, we'll just go on to the next slides because we're going to be quite short of time. So within the subdomain of communication, we've got one of the descriptive statements is communicates effectively using technology. And what we mean by that is um, is that that you can communicate using lots of different tools and that you're confident moving from one to another. And within the framework, what we have it are three capability statements. And I saw somewhere else someone had um, someone had called these curious, confident and coach as in the different levels. So we've got level one, which is 
um, that sort of first level. So maybe you're learning about something, maybe you can do it with support, you're, you're aware of it, you're curious, you want to know more. And then the next level is where you're really confident at doing something on your own and, and, and maybe you can provide a little bit of support for other people. And then the third level really is where you're coaching other people, you're leading on it, you're very much a, an, um, an ambassador for uh, digital technology externally. So that's kind of the three levels. And what we're asking people to do is to think about the descriptive statement and then look at the capability statements and choose one that they think most reflects where they are at the moment. So in terms of communicating effectively using technology, we would we would expect that working within NHS Wales that you can you can communicate with others digitally because we have been doing it throughout the pandemic. Um, but perhaps just using a limited number of tools, so maybe just using messaging or, or using email. Um, then the next level is that you can communicate with others digitally using lots of different tools. So that's, you know, using Teams confidently, using webinars, um, you, having video calls, you know, lots of different tools and maybe being able to move from, from one to the other easily. And then the, the third level, you can really confidently communicate complex information in different ways using a range of tools. So you're maybe the person who's actually setting up the meetings and running the webinars. And, and if people get stuck, they come to you for help. So that's the sort of coach level. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is we're going to use Menti, um, which I think most people are familiar with now. Um, so if you go to menti.com, and enter the code, or you can use your uh, camera and the QR code. And then you'll see the question that I've just asked. Hang on, mine didn't work. Now it's anonymous, so please feel free to um, answer uh, honestly. No one's gonna, Oh, fantastic. We're all excellent communicators. For all the researchers and scientists out there, I am going to say there's an element of uh, self-selection bias in this question, given that we are all on teams and doing a grand job. So that's great. I think that's everyone. So um, I'd say quite strong on that one. Lauren, can we move on to the next one? I think we're probably only going to do a couple of these because of the time. So the next part is um, this is about understanding that the way you design your digital communications is different for different purposes and different audiences. So at that sort of level one, you you might know that you need to communicate differently in different spaces, um, but perhaps you, you need to learn a bit more about that. So maybe you're aware that the tone in a personal and a professional email is different, but you're not sure about more than that. Uh, the next level is um, I can communicate using a, a range of digital tools in different and appropriate ways that respect differing needs, expectations, cultures and experience. And I know that is a really broad capability statement, but that's really that is what you need to think about every time that you are creating something uh, digitally. So you need to think about different formats in terms of accessibility. You need to think about timings for people who have caring responsibilities. And, uh, you know, there, there is a lot to think about. And then the next level is I role model these appropriate methods, tools, tones of communication um, and that you provide advice and guidance to others. And, and maybe you feed into policy development or, um, you know, you're involved in, in committees. So, Lauren, have we got the mentee question for that one as well? So if you've got it still on your phone, it should just move on to the next one. Fantastic. We're all great at our digital communication on, on here today. Okay, Lauren, I think 
we're, we'll manage one more, I think, and then we'll just go to the feedback part because we're going to run out of time, which is my fault for being terrible chair. Um, so the third section in this subdomain is understands the risks and benefits of communicating online. Um, and that's really about understanding things like um, the, the impact of social media um, and your digital footprint. So the, at the first level, you're learning about the different ways of communicating online and about the risks. Um, the next level is you confidently understand the benefits and risks um, of different ways of communicating Um and the example there is, you know, you might use different platforms as appropriate. So perhaps you keep Facebook for your friends and family um, and your Twitter or LinkedIn is very professional. And then the next level is that you provide leadership and guidance to others. Um, so I think we'll just go on to the next, the, the mentee. And... And I'm expecting this to be really strong again, because clearly you're all excellent at digital communication. Fantastic. Now, Lauren, we're at 10.58, so um, I've been terrible at timings. Um, so can we just go to the end of that presentation where there's a bit on feedback? So I appreciate everyone that you didn't get to see the digital capability framework in great detail, but the format and the structure is very similar all the way through it. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, it would be really good to get some feedback on the small part that you've already seen. So again, that is in um, that's in Menti. So if you have a look at your phones, then you should be able to answer the questions. And you are the first group really outside of the working group to see this. Um, so you have an opportunity now to, to, to help shape what we do. So, um, you know, if, if there's any issues or if there's any feedback that, that you have, there'll, there'll be a free text part at the end as well. So um, please do be, be very open and honest. I think we can move on, Lauren. I was going to say, Lee, the link will be open after this session as well. So if anybody wanted to go back through it and take a look at some of the questions they didn't get a chance to answer, we can we can share that link in the in the chat bar. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. OK, well, let's just kind of whiz through them then. And um, if anyone wants to go back over, then that's fine. Lauren, whizzing now. No props. So as we are running out of time, while we are um, working our way through the questions, there aren't that many, but uh, for all the multitaskers there, um, if anyone has any questions, then now would be a good time because we are already over time. I do apologise. Sharon? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, me again. Just quickly, just to say that the questions that you're asking, some of them, they don't quite cover everything. so. I kind of the one about not having time or I kind of feel like it would just be the way to implement it for us. None of those none of those answers were the way I was thinking we probably implement it. So sorry, how would you implement it? Well. You are one of the one of the answers was you don't have time or do you want to dip in and dip out? I just think it's a complex thing to dip in and dip out of for people who perhaps are not so familiar with digital technology. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like it would need to be a kind of a service led supported thing. 
Um, so I think we would probably do it as a group. I think we try yeah. and support each other through it in groups. Yeah. So it's I, like this. There's definitely not a one size fits all with mm. it. Um, and there will be people who will want to dip in and out of it. And there will be people who will want to do it as more of a supported approach. Um, but the, the, the framework is de designed to be flexible in that way. But that's really good feedback. Are there any other questions? So apologies for overrunning. Um, if you do want to get involved, then you can join the community of practice. And I've realised that you can't click on that link. Um, let me just find it. Um, two seconds. I'm going to put it in the chat. So we have a community of practice on Teams and it's through the community of practice we provide updates. And if you want to be involved in the work going forward or if you want to be involved in the pilot, then that is um, that's the way to do it. So thank you, everyone, especially our presenters. Apologies again for overrunning. Terrible cheering from me. Um, have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic weekend. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>